Hey guys, Joe Teddy, Spartan Americana. Um, I've made several videos uh, about knives in the past, um, <clears throat> folders and whatnot, and my opinions on them. And what prompted me to make this video today is I actually had a conversation with a couple guys yesterday um, <clears throat> about knives, uh, and, and specifically fixed blade knives when it comes to uh, EDC, everyday carry. Now, <clears throat> I've carried a folder uh, most of my life, and I just started getting into carrying a fixed blade knife. Um, and there are a lot of pros when it comes to carrying a fixed blade knife. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and one is deployment, and that's the biggie. Uh, with a folder, not only do you have to get it out of your pocket, uh, or out of your appendix, depending if you're carrying it in your pocket or an appendix carry, and then you have to deploy it, whether it's with your thumb, spring assisted, switch blade, whatever. But it's like a two step process. With a fixed blade knife, you get it out and you're ready to go to work. So um, I'm getting used to carrying a, a fixed blade knife. Um, but here's why I'm making this video I'm all about quality. And I, I started thinking about this, and I, I, I want to give my two cents on it. I've got four knives right here. These are my own knives. I'm not going to say who makes them because it doesn't matter. What I'm going to talk about is price and functionality. I have four knives that range in price from $30 to $500 right here. Okay. Um, and I will tell you this, the only difference is the one has a leather sheath. The other ones have Kydex. They're all full tang knives. Um, okay, that was a double-edged type of a dagger boot knife. This one, a little bit smaller, single-edged. Uh, my car to handle, a little bit different color on the blade, the way it was polished. And then this knife here, a little bit bigger, a uh, little bit different type of grip, my car to handle. And again, Kydex, Kydex. So I guess my question to you and to, uh, to myself is, what is the difference between using a, a very, very expensive knife um, to carry uh, or a cheaper knife? It's made out of basically the same steel. Basically. Basically. There's all different kinds of steels. They're all made out of, the grips are either made out of G10 or micarta or something similar. Okay? But a blade is a blade especially if you're using it in the application. Look, am I going to take this knife, this EDC, and go out and start prying up stuff in my yard and cutting down trees? No, it's not made for that. Same with this knife or this knife. These are not meant for that application. So yeah, if I took this knife right here and started prying with it, I'm going to snap the tip off. Guaranteed, I don't care how good a steel it is, I could do it. And I could do it in about two seconds. Same with this knife and this knife and this knife. Okay. Um, it's the application. Survival knives are bigger, the burlier, the longer blades, they're thicker, the tang's thicker. Um, these are EDC knives. So I guess my question is this Is a person going to know the difference that you're defending yourself against, whether you attack them with this knife or this knife or this knife or this knife? No, they're not. A slice is a slice and a stab is a stab, just like a bullet hole in you. Whether it comes from a $100 piece of garbage pistol or a $2,500 race gun, it's still inflicting injury. This is, I'm talking about these knives more importantly than a folder. A folder has, you definitely have to get a quality folder because if it doesn't deploy the way it should, you got problems. And there's mechanics involved with in it and tolerances. But these two components, you got the blade, and you got the grip. That's it. <clears throat> okay, so the way I'm starting to look at this is like this. Sure, if you've got the money to go buy a four or five hundred dollar custom knife, good on you. Okay, um, most of us don't have the pocketbook for that. My knife collection, I have well over a hundred knives in my collection that have taken years and years and years of buying and trading. But my point is this to me personally, whether I carry this knife or this knife or this knife or this knife, okay, from $30 to $500, okay, they're all going to do the same job. Here's a kicker too. If you're carrying an EDC knife, 
You shouldn't be opening up your mail. You shouldn't be cutting open boxes with it. You shouldn't be going out in your yard and chopping down weeds. The first time you use this knife should be to defend yourself against a human target. That's my opinion. It should be razor sharp out of the box. And I'm going to be honest with you, not going to point at the knives, but the sharpest knife I have here is not the most expensive. I can tell you that right now, and it's noticeably sharper than the other knives, and it's not the most expensive. So I'm just telling you my experience. Sure, if you can afford really, really expensive knives, great. These are not all expensive. One is, and they and they go down in price in there. What I'm telling you is it's steel in a grip. If it's made out of my Carter G10, look at the steel. The steel that they're using for a very expensive knife could very easily be the same steel that they use on another knife. It just has to do with the name and branding and all of that stuff. And I'm not knocking the expensive knives. I own a few of them and I love them. But for most of you that are watching this video, you don't have to buy a four or $500 knife to have a fantastic everyday carry knife. I would carry any one of these. Okay, for an EDC knife, any one of them. Um, and, um, and that's the point of this video is, you know, um, you don't have to break your pocketbook to have a good everyday carry knife. This applies to everyday carry fixed blades. Not talking about folders, that's a different story. Um, but when it comes to a fixed blade knife, it needs to fit your hand. And again, make sure that the blade length, depending on what state you live in, okay, does the blade length um, apply to the law and 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 sticks to the um, to the laws of your state? Same with the overall length. That is also important. You need to check your state's laws and regulations on that. But anyway, guys, that's my two cents. Uh, a lot of you are going to watch this and go, oh, now you're saying to buy garbage. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you, if I stab you with this knife or this knife, or this knife, or this knife, you're getting stabbed, okay? It's still going to cause damage. One may cause more damage than the other because the blade's bigger, but as far as the, the functionality of it, this blade is going to stab as good as any of the other ones, okay? Um, that's my opinion. I've been to a few knife fighting schools, and I've, I've used a knife downrange once, um, and I can tell you from personal experience, um, the knife that I actually used, um, in the one instance that I had to, there's a knife that my grandfather gave me as a kid. It was an old buck knife, the old stainless steel buck knife with the, with this uh, stainless steel, uh, grip and the two black, um, caps on it. That's what I was carrying. And it's a whole nother story, but it certainly wasn't made for fighting and it wasn't a high quality knife, but it got the job done. But anyway, guys, if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want some more information, uh, on uh, other knives I've talked about. Just check out my YouTube channel. I've got a few on there, and I will be making more. Hope you have a great day.